Well, hello there. Hope you found me. Well, you have if you're watching this. So this is English Concertina for Beginners, uh, 13B, the second part of session number 13. And we're having a look at beginning uh, to read music. So I've got a, a zoom in here on a, a, on a little part of the uh, uh, Finale Notepad um, program. And that's what I've downloaded for free. I advise you to do the same. It's a lot of fun and you can learn a lot by using it. So let's have a look at a few features then of, uh, of what we get when we're reading music. We get a stave, these five lines here and these five lines here. Okay, We get something called a treble clef at the beginning of our music. That's what you need to look out for as a concertina player. Uh, certainly the treble concertinas, that's what you need to look out for. If you see a different symbol at the beginning of the music that'll throw you because that's used by uh, people reading lower pitched instruments like the bottom end of the piano or a cello or a, a double bass or something like that. We need to look out for this treble clef. At the beginning of most pieces of music we'll find a pair of numbers. I've put a, a four and a four here. This top four tells us that there are going to be four beats in each bar and you should be used to me by now counting one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, so that's what that four means. If we were going to be playing a waltz, it would be three beats in the bar, it, and I would count one, two, three, two, two, three, and these numbers would be three, four. But we've got four, four. So the four on the top is the number of beats in the bar, and the number below tells us that we're using quarter notes. This purple note here is a quarter note. Okay, Four of those make up a whole note. I'm using the American numbering system. I find it easier to figure out which each note is if I know its value. Okay, So that's a quarter note and there are four of them in the bar. So if I type C, ah, let's come to this software now. There we go. If I type C, 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 and C again. You'll see that that last one has popped over into the next bar. And in my first bar, I have four quarter notes. Okay. Interestingly, I've turned this note, the one here, the purple one, with that is got a hole in it. Yeah, it's a, it's an empty note with the, 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 the downward stem there. That's a half note and that has twice the value in terms of how long it lasts as the quarter notes. Now I've got a playback control down here and if I come back to the beginning and play I should expect to hear C C C C C okay and here's play exactly what I was hoping for. Okay, so we've got four beats in a bar and the types of note we to expect are quarter notes. Four quarter notes or the equivalent of that in a bar. Okay, now I'm going to hit return and let's have a look at uh, the pitches of the notes. Now you may remember from school there were two, two little uh, phrases. One was every good boy deserves fruit and that tells us that the notes on the lines, that note there is E for every, that note there is G for good, this note here is B for boy, D for deserves and F for fruit or favour. So every good boy deserves fruit and it's really helpful for us English concertina players because those lines are on the left hand end of the box. In other words, the notes on the lines are always on the left hand end of your box. The notes in the spaces, like that one, F, do you remember face? F, A, C, and E, those four notes, are on the right hand end of the concertina. So you've immediately got a clue when you see a note in a gap like that in a space, it's on the right hand end of the box. If you see a note like that on a line, it's on the left hand end of the box. Okay, so you've got every good boy deserves fruit or favour and F A C E F A C E. Okay? 
Now, let's have a little play around with this software. I'm going to put C, D, E, D, C, like that, okay? You should recognize that as the, the bottom of the scale. We've done a lot of work with the C scale, and even before I hit play, you should know what that sounds like. La, da, 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 da. Stop. Let's hit play. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Okay. I'm going to hit return. How about this? I hope you recognize this. Just type in those notes on the computer keyboard. Just typing them in, okay? But you'll recognize that, I hope, as the uh, three notes coming down the scale down to the C. Okay, three blind mice, the beginning of three blind mice. How about go and tell Aunt Nancy? How does that go? Something like this. Okay, and if we go back to the beginning and hit play. Okay, can you see how that's working? Let's go back to the beginning. Let's have a little bit of Beethoven. I think we've just gone off screen there, so I'll finish at that point. But I hit return, and you know what that's going to sound like. Okay, and I'm sorry, that's happened to me before. There we go. Is that about right? Yes, that's about right. Okay, so I need to uh, highlight a note and uh, use the backspace key and then we can come all the way back to there. Let's go up the scale, shall we? So C, D. How about that? C, D, E, F, G, G, G. Excuse my singing. Let's come back to the beginning, like that, and hit play. OK, you got the hang of that. What jumps did we learn? We learnt the jump from G to C, didn't we? Like that. OK. Let's go back and hear that played. That's the jump from the fifth note in the scale to the top note in the scale. And we see that in things like uh, British Grenadiers. And they all run after the farmer's wife, that, that jump there. OK, do you recognise that? Last lesson, I think it was last lesson, I mentioned the first two notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Actually, let's make that a bit longer, like that. See whether you recognise this. And if I hit back to the beginning, there you can see two notes an octave apart from the lower C, the beginning of our scale, up to the top. Here we go. Hope you recognise that as the first two notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. OK, how about coming down the scale? And if we, uh, my alarm's just about to go off here. That's nine minutes. Hey, I'm getting organised. Okay, so if we hit play. Okay. So this lesson so far, we've seen the stave. We know the names of the notes on the stave. We've seen the treble clef. We know that the four here means we can have four beats in each of our bars of music. Each beat is going to be a quarter note. You can see a quarter note there. OK. This is the C here. This here is a D. And I've made that into a half note. OK. So that's what we've learned so far in this lesson. OK. Well, I hope that's helpful. I've got a couple of tunes. I've got Old Lang Syne and I've got O When the Saints. And if you'd like to have a look at O When the Saints, that's... Uh, going to be renamed Lesson 14. Have a look at that, okay? Alright, thanks very much. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.